Hi there, my name is David Wright. Uh, welcome to uh, another interview uh, for my doors. Um, today I'm going to be speaking to James Forrest. Um, he has, uh, has completed the Nuttles of 446 of the mountains in England and Wales over 2,000 feet in 2017. In 2018 completed 273 mountains over 600 metres in 56 days, still the fastest time. All 282 Monroes in 2019, so I'm having to read this because there's so much of it, and most importantly, I'm my outdoors contributor. Uh, it's good to talk to you, it's good to finally meet you. Eli. Good to speak to you, Davey, thanks for yeah. inviting me. Cool. Um, so 2020 brought a new challenge, so you've just racked them up every year. Um, yeah. So <laughs> all the Wainwrights, self-supported in yeah. one go. How... Was that a decision pre-lockdown, or had, had, was that always the plan for 2020, um, or what was the decision well, well, for it? Yeah, I, I really wanted to do another kind of big adventure in 2020 after it's kind of uh, different trips I'd done in the previous years, and um, and, and basically, um, if you recall, during lockdown, it, we had this. Uh, two months of glorious weather when the sun didn't stop shining and um, that gave me this real confidence that it would be a good idea to go on another mountain hiking mm -hmm. adventure um, all I could see was blue skies and and glorious sunshine and it, it seemed like it would be a wonderful uh, hedonistic uh, exciting joyous adventure to go on mm -hmm. um, uh, and so, yeah, during lockdown, I decided I'm going to try and do the Wainwrights and uh, try and walk them in one big kind of epic walk. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's what I did a few, a few weeks ago. It took me 14 days and 11 hours. Um, sadly, I didn't get that good weather that we had in lockdown. Um, and I was actually somewhat battered by some rather horrendous Cumbrian weather. So my kind of plan didn't quite quite work out too well I think maybe you shouldn't uh, decide to go on adventures when when the sun's shining you should decide whether it's a good idea when it's like normal kind yeah. of like gray drizzly weather <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's when we do decide to do these things isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't look out the window and think let's go for a massive adventure <laughs> no uh... it's raining sorry um so you you said in an um and, and some stuff I read that you used the information from Steve Birkinshaw and, and uh, Paul yes. Tierney, who did it, obviously, as an ultra-running type event, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, supported, obviously. Um, yes. That must have saved a bit of time in terms of planning. Yeah, that was um, that was kind of really, really helpful. So, um, yeah, I followed the route that Steve Birkinshaw mm -hmm. created. It's this really clever, kind of intricate, complex um winding route through the Lake District yeah. bagging all 214 Wainwrights in the kind of the most efficient way mm -hmm. possible. Um, so it was really kind of him to lend me that lend me that route and kind of saved me a lot of kind of planning to be able to follow follow that route. And um and yeah I was really inspired by these um by these ultra runners who've done these insane times like all the Wainwrights in under a week it just kind of blows my mind how anyone could could do that um personally I'm not a, I'm not a runner I've never run a marathon I'm not an ultra runner um but I love hiking and I love wild camping and I kind of wanted to have the same kind of exciting journey they had around the Lake District but to do it in my own way so I did it as a hike I did it as self-supported, so I was kind of wild camping in the fells. I was carrying my own kit in my backpack and uh, kind of, yeah, just being able to do a single round of the of all 214 Wainwrights, but in my own style and in a way that kind of suited me. And and it and it, and it worked out. It worked out pretty well. You had some moments though. Had quite a few. Uh, quite a few uh, uh, kind of very low moments. Mm -hmm. uh, um, just, just it was really on the weather. I was so vulnerable to the, mm -hmm. to the weather. Um, the, uh, and it's just a very difficult thing if you're trying to kind of walk for 12, 13 hours a day, put in like a really big day, 40K and 
three thousand meters of ascent or something and it just yeah. rains constantly all day and you do 15 Wayne rights, but you don't see a view from a single one, <laughs> it kind of um, crushes your spirit a little bit and just really chips away at your patience and your kind of um, morale well, and your spirit yeah. and your resilience. And I found it a real kind of mental battle against, against the weather. Uh, and it really did kind of um, really did test me. And there were a few days where it was so bad that, I was so fed up with it that I genuinely did think about kind of throwing in the towel. Right. It was, it was just when it became kind of not fun, you know, this was just my time off. I suppose in theory, supposed to be enjoying it, having a, a fun adventure, but when you're just getting battered by battered by a storm is it's very difficult to uh, uh, sugarcoat that and see it in a kind of positive way. But, yeah. but I'm really pleased that I found the kind of strength to uh, get through it and to kind of uh, battle on and uh, and make it to the finish line. The um, I saw you obviously on on Instagram and some of your stories on Instagram, um, and and you were obviously struggling with it mm-hmm. because because of the weather, like you, like you talked about there. Was mm-hmm. there a was there a sort of assistance there from the like is that. I know it was self-supported, but did that support help in any way? Did, were people reaching out to you when it, when when you were from them? Stories? Yeah, um, I, d- I did feel this kind of wave of um, kind of support and love and kind of like, uh, yeah, um, kind of, yeah, love and support from the community. And um, I knew that people were behind me, that they were cheering me on, that they kind of wanted me to to kind of do well and were willing me willing me on and that really did help that did give me kind of like an extra boost and a little bit of a spring in my step and a bit of kind of extra motivation to keep going it was a double-edged sword though because I also felt a bit of pressure from that as well that I didn't want to let people down I didn't want to fail um so but, but but all in all i did that did that did kind of really really help me mm. and i think one of the real challenges in doing a self-supported round of the wainwrights is that you are very um it, it's all on you you're very kind of self-reliant mm. if you're one of these ultra runners i know you have a kind of big support team around you you're running with other people someone's maybe setting the pace or you've got teammates around you and you know if you have low moments or you're struggling someone might be able to perk you up or motivate you or Mm -hmm. give you a kick up the backside or uh, make you laugh or joke around or whatever you need to kind of get out of those low moments you have people around around Mm -hmm. you being being kind of on my own I was kind of like dealing with those lows on Mm -hmm. my own and if if I got myself into a kind of negative spiral kind of emotionally and psychologically. It was more difficult to kind of drag, drag myself out of it. Um, and that's kind of one of the, one of the kind of difficulties and challenges of, of doing something kind of solo in the mountains. Yes. And it's kind of, uh, you get both sides. I kind of actually love that challenge and it's kind of exciting and it's something quite kind of pretty awesome about, only having yourself to rely on and uh, uh, and there's something kind of really challenging and, and kind of life affirming about it at the same time though it, it's kind of it is difficult and it and it can be tough when 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 you're struggling mm. so your, your other um, attempts the not attempts or your other uh, challenge you did so you did uh, 56 days for the um, for the Irish uh, how did you pronounce that? I didn't. I, I never actually. Is it um, it, they're the Vandala Linums, I think. Mark, yeah. um, it's like a very. It's not a very catchy name for no, it's not, no. the mountains. No. Um, but that was fifty sixties, so it's obviously quite considerably longer than mm. this challenge. Mm-hmm. And I know. I think I read somebody had ten days kind of downtime within that fifty sixties. Yeah. So I think what I really the differences lie. Yeah, I mean, all my other challenges, I had my car with me I was driving around to different mountain ranges and kind of like hiking for a few days maybe wild camping for a few days coming back to my car 
maybe going to a hostel for a few days on Airbnb, um, doing some day walks. It was kind of a bit broken up in a way. It was, it wasn't like one continuous walk. I could, um, it was, you know, I always had my car with me. There was always in some ways that slight kind of safety net of being able to dive into a hostel if the weather was terrible or, or having, you know, spare clothes and different sets of boots and yeah. food and all the rest of it in, in my car. Um, so that was a kind of big difference to the Wainwrights challenge in the Wainwrights literally had my backpack and I set off from Keswick and I walked for 15 days, like nonstop. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, once I'd set off, that was it. I was a hundred percent committed to that to that walk um and so that kind of that was something different and i i kind of love that it it makes the journey feel quite authentic and and kind of uh and like a real kind of journey and a real adventure at the same time it i feel i feel personally that it kind of increased the difficulty level oh yeah now i did see and um, just sort of hopping back to the preparation there was a picture i think i saw on probably instagram that you had a big pile of plastic tubs full of your resupply so yeah so in terms of the supported part of it what mm. how does that fit in or the self-supported part of it how does that yeah fit the, the um so basically um can get a little bit technical but um but the there's kind of like different specific definitions of um okay. kind of ways you can undertake an adventure uh, so unsupported is where you carry everything with you from the very beginning except water so mm -hmm. um so if someone what someone did the wainwrights unsupported they would carry all of their food for however many days they're going for in their backpack from yep. day one when they set off from keswick i decided not to do that approach <laughs> um because i'm nowhere near strong enough to carry yeah, 14 yeah, exactly. days of food <laughs> <laughs> um but the kind of alternative which fits within the kind of self-supported definition is to um have stash boxes that you resupply from so um and that's that's kind of completely accepted within the the kind of normal definition of a self-supported adventure. Um, so the way I did it was I had these plastic storage boxes. I put kind of expedition meals, snacks, breakfast, lunches, um, dry socks, camping gas, a few toiletries, just little things that I needed to to kind of replenish along the way. Mm -hmm. Sealed these boxes, and then before I set off on the adventure. I stashed them in different kind of strategic locations around the Lake District and um, and kind of where I put them was I, I'd kind of arranged um, before setting off so and it, and it was all just arranged by email and just asking for for kind of random favors so some farmers let me put a box in their barn that I was going to walk past um, had a box in a church for example I had a box um, just at the back behind a pub um and, and basically what i did was every few days when i walked past one of these places i would grab this box and just really just refill my my backpack with what i needed the f mostly food a, a new gas canister i could put some dry socks on maybe a, a kind of clean t-shirt and that's how i kind of managed the the kind of food situation i guess um and, and it worked really well. I was, I was really pleased with it. The, the alternative could maybe have been to drop out of the mountains and go to a village and go to a supermarket or a co-op or a shop yeah. or something like that. But that seemed kind of a bit of a, a faff and would alter yeah. the route quite a bit. And the kind of stash box approach seemed to, seemed to yeah. kind of work so you didn't really well. you didn't touch any shops or anything like that? No, I didn't go to any shops. I didn't eat in any any pubs mm -hmm. um, or restaurants. Um, I mean, you know, you, different, I think different people can kind of like come up with their own approach to a self-supported adventure within the the kind of official definition. Um, so th there's nothing wrong with really, in theory, going into a pub along the way and uh, and. Mm getting a getting a pint and a, 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 
a burger and chips or whatever. Set the same place, one fire. You might not go yeah, out again. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it would have been way more civilized and a far more sensible decision if I had chosen to do that. Um, <laughs> but I, but I kind of chose to do it in, uh, in the way that I wanted. And I kind of had this idea that I wanted it to be kind of very much a, a kind of like wild camping trip and back to basics and, mm-hmm. and a kind of real, kind of self-sufficient adventure mm-hmm. and I'm pleased I'm pleased that I did that um and 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 even though I had some kind of quite awful nights in the tent with uh uh terrible winds and and the mm-hmm. rain lashing down onto the tent all night uh, which wasn't particularly conducive to a good night's sleep I I did have some wonderful wild camps as well um there's one on home fell like a little fell had these views of the langdale pikes like the perfect jagged skyline of the langdale pikes uh the sun was setting the sky was turning pink and orange and red and i was just all alone just like tucking into my uh pasta expedition meal and and just kind of looking at this wonderful uh, landscape and scenery and so I did have some kind of really really genuinely kind of magical moments on the trip as well and that's what'll stick it won't be the the horrible ones that <laughs> that that will stick in your mind it'll be that that'll be that one that's the one you'll refer yeah, to yeah exactly I, I think I'm already forgetting some of the hardships and sort of romanticizing some of the uh the good okay. moments yeah, already. I'll try um, not to remind you too much of the old the, uh, the yeah the <laughs> <laughs> I do love the I love the Lake District though I think um is you, you know I, I kind of live near the lake district and had like a real strong kind of emotional attachment to it since mm-hmm. a young age because i used to come here as a little boy and have family holidays here and the the landscape just truly kind of beautiful and majestic and it's my favorite place to adventure in the uk so that was another kind of part of my motivation to to yeah. do a round of the Wainwrights, just my, my love of, of, of the Lake District. Of the District. So, little, little sort of curveball question, is there anything that you would, now with hindsight, being 2020 vision, is there anything you would have changed in terms of preparation, route, obviously taking out the weather issue, mm-hmm. you can't change the weather unfortunately, but um, was it with, um, in terms of the logistics and the, and the structure of it, was there anything you would change? Yeah, um... I'm still kind of mulling that one over, I guess. Sure. Um, I think, yeah, there's there's maybe little things I would tweak and change. Um, I mean, I tried to keep my, say, kit set up and my backpack as light as possible. Uh, you can get really kind of obsessive with it and end up thinking, oh, I should have taken x instead of y or you know um if i'd taken a that would have saved me 30 grams instead of b or or what have you um when i look back on it sometimes i think could i have done it faster or more efficiently in some ways um i'm not too sure i mean that it, it sometimes i thought maybe like i could just not bother with even cooking um hot meals just like eat eat Mm. kind of like cold meals all the time like i think when you're trying to kind of walk fast and and long days you're kind of pouring in this huge amount of energy into just kind of getting through the miles and the ascent that i found like anything that was an added chore or extra just felt like a huge effort kind of like cooking meals or setting up the tent or all these different things just felt kind of like quite draining energy wise so anything that could kind of save me time I kind of like kept thinking about but um but at the same time you don't want to turn the mountains into this kind of uh just this assault course to be tackled in the fastest possible time and and just kind of really ruin the more spiritual kind of um benefits the freedom and escapism and the fresh air that you get from the mountains um so you have to kind of be careful how you how you plan things i always wanted to kind of try and strike this perfect balance between like it being a real 
physical challenge that pushed my limits and, and really tested me. Um, and I, and I do love a good, like, like a real hard exercise challenge that for me, I get a buzz from that and I, I enjoy that, but I didn't want that to be the sole thing. I also wanted to be able to have enough time to spend five minutes to really sit down and enjoy the views. Or I wanted to have time to, enjoy a few hours wild camping and taking in the sunset. I wanted to kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, yeah. And sometimes I kind of walk that tightrope and got and achieve that, that balance. Um, other times, other times I don't think I did. So that was a kind of uh, a learning curve for me as well. No, fair enough. So has the, I mean, so how long, what was your official time? Did you get it back to the um, or? My official time was 14 days and 11 hours. Okay. Um, so I'd actually planned to do it in um, 18 days. Um, I had enough food stashed for 18 days. I wasn't quite sure how I would cope with the kind of uh, distances and ascent. And uh, But I managed to kind of go faster than I thought I would. Uh, my, my kind of body seemed to adapt quite quite quickly to doing these long, long days. Um, but most of all, towards the end, the weather was just so terrible that I was absolutely desperate to get home. And so I just put in these like insane days towards the end, just like desperate to get home. So I did like the last two days, I did over a hundred kilometers. So I was just kind of at the end, I was just blinkered and yeah. um, desperate to go home. So rather than slowing me down in some ways the bad weather actually kind of sped me up which it maybe sure. seems a bit counterintuitive but um mm. but i was just dreaming of a, a hot shower and a, and a and a real bed and uh the chance Probably. to get some uh chance to get a curry or a takeaway pizza so that was like just pure motivation to get home <laughs> excellent so has the has the achievement sunk in yet um yeah, I think it's sunk in. Um, it's kind of been, yeah, it's been kind of really nice to have a week um, since I did it and to kind of take it in and um, read messages people have sent me kind of congratulating me. Um, so in some ways it has sunk in. In, in other ways, it feels like a kind of bizarre um, kind of dream that, that uh, yeah, this kind of bizarre alternate reality that I lived in for a fortnight where my entire existence was uh, mm. just wet tents and grueling a sense and spending all day feeling cold and wet and miserable and getting battered by storms. And Sounds awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it was just, so yeah, it kind of, in some ways I feel like almost like it didn't happen. Like it was this strange, yeah. strange dream that, uh, that, that yeah it is like some sort of alternate reality so it, yeah it's, it's a strange so, thing to get your head around anyway when you get back home and suddenly everything is back to normal um it's it's always a it's always a kind of challenging and interesting yeah. thing to go through kind of adapting to the yeah. end of a of a big a big adventure definitely so inevitably then You've clocked off something since 2017. So what does 2021 bring? Is it, a, is it anything on the cards? Uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. I'm still still mulling that one over. Uh, I mean, I keep joking to people that I'm, after, after that Wainwrights trip, I'm now going to retire from hill walking and take up yeah. a far more, far more sensible hobby. I might, <laughs> might become a... Uh, a gamer i might buy an xbox or a, a playstation or something just stay right. inside and be warm and and dry <laughs> as my main priority <laughs> or or if not that then uh maybe do an adventure in the um caribbean or or ah. somewhere with, with a far greater um a percentage likelihood of getting good weather but well, no, no, but, but I joke. <laughs> I love it really. I'm sure I'll find myself uh, doing some sort of long distance trail, or yeah. I don't know. The strange thing about peak bagging is so I've done quite a bit of peak bagging. Obviously, I've done the Nuttles and the yeah. Munros and yeah. 
all these different trips over the past few years. But um, the more you kind of know about peak bagging, the more you realize that still is to do. It's one of those type of situations. So uh, you do the Munros. Yeah. yeah, you do the Munros and you think, ah, oh, that's I've done a lot of Scotland. I've seen a lot of Scotland. And then someone tells you, oh, are you doing the Corvettes? Are you doing yeah. the mm -hmm. Grahams? Have you done the Munro tops? Um, <laughs> oh, you've done the Nuttles, but you haven't done the Marilyns. Oh, you've done the Wainwrights, <laughs> but you haven't done the Burkitts yet in the yeah. main district. So there's there's always another list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, we'll see what the see what the future what holds. Well, we look forward to finding out what that that's going to be. Um, Thank you, th mate. Thanks for uh, thanks for your time tonight, um, and um, I hopefully catch a, catch up maybe on the hill, maybe uh, on, a, on a if you yeah. ever decide to go back. If you don't revert to the Xbox, um, <laughs> no, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll see <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, I'll yeah. see you in the hills one day. That would be that would be fun. We can go for a hike, hopefully. Brilliant. All right, yeah. James. Thank you very much for your time. Mountain thanks, Mark. mate. See you later on. Take care. Take care. Cheers, bye.